One day I was sitting in a gym room and I didn't know the name of most of the equipments present there. So I decided to look up for them on Google Lens. But surprisingly, I couldn't get any matching or clear answers. And at that time, I was also doing machine learning, deep learning stuff. So I was looking for creating some unique projects. By unique, I don't mean out of the box projects, but projects which are uh, like not available on web. So I decided to create this project on my own. While searching on the web, I couldn't find a single project matching to this one. A few websites were there like this recognize and identify gym, but these are classifying some other things. And this kind of project is not available on, on YouTube or other platform also. For creating the project, I need data. So when I looked up for data, then I couldn't find it anywhere. So I had to create my own data set. I had also uploaded this data on Kaggle. So I will put the link in description. For collecting this data, I go to web and search for the equipment name respectively. And then just use the scraping technique for collecting the images from these web searches. So the first part of our project was to do web scrapping for collecting the data and after that we are going to train our model. So first of all I did the training using machine learning models but surprisingly using these models I couldn't achieve any good enough accuracy as you can see. So then I decided to move on to deep learning. So I used CNN model using PyTorch. Models like CNN, ImageNet, RESNet, etc. are well known for solving these problems which involve images and this kind of stuff. So these models were good enough for our project. And after training the model, the next task was to build a website where users can upload the equipment images and model takes the image and a model will classify the image that means it will give its name and description so the first part is for web scraping or image scraping so let's learn how to scrape these images and store them inside our local machine and for web scraping we will be using request and beautiful soup so here i am importing them after that, we have to pass a URL. So this URL is nothing but the, this URL, which we got after clicking on this image section. Here I am using Microsoft Edge, but I believe Google Chrome will work very good for this task. I will just copy this URL and paste it over here. After passing the URL, what we are doing is we are creating a variable HTML and this is for requesting the URL and we are storing the content of this HTML inside this content variable. After that we are parsing using beautiful soup. So we will parse this content and for parsing we will be using HTML parser. After parsing we are finding all the tags containing this img or image tag and we are storing them inside this img variable so this is how our img is going to look so it's a list containing the all these tags you can see this one last image tag starts from here and it's ending to this and this is the second one and so on after that we are defining a download image method where we are passing the images parameter this images is nothing but it's going to be this image variable which will contain the list of all image tags we are setting the count equal to zero and we are printing the total length of images that we found 
after that if the length of images is not equal to zero then what we are doing is we are enumerating the images and we are trying to get the image link so we have to use this try except statements because as you can see here i am getting the image link by this particular image tag where the link is stored in data source src set parameter so uh, just take a look at here as you can see in this last image tag our link or source for the image is stored inside this src parameter but if you look a bit upward then you can see we have this data src parameter also where our link is stored so in some cases our image link is stored in this data source set or data src so we have to check for all of them one by one you can also use if else statements also that's your choice and after that after getting the image link what we have to do is we are creating a request to get the particular image link and storing its content in this r variable then we are trying to convert this r into this utf8 format and if it's not possible to convert it in this format then we are creating our image or storing it in our local machine with this command with open and this image is i plus one this i is nothing but the variable or you can say a counter variable which we created here it will be different for each image so our images will be named something like images one images two dot jpj images three and so on so that they all have unique names and this one is for giving it right access after writing or creating the image we are just incrementing and passing try accept statements and at last we have to use this download image function and pass the img parameter here so this will do our task so let's try running it when i run it uh, this is just our image that img that we printed and you can see it says total 187 images found and here it's downloading these 187 images you can see let's have a look on them so as you can see we are getting different different images for dumbbells so we did this for the dumbbells and now we have to store them inside a single folder so for doing that i will just do control a and control click on this python files and control x and create a new folder here name it dumbbells inside that dumbbell i am doing control v to paste all these images and that's it for our dumbbells file folder similarly you can do for other equipments like for elliptical machine you can just search for it on web and go to this image section then just copy this link and do the same for this one by replacing this url and store all the images inside a new folder so that's all for the web scraping or image scraping in the next part we will be training our model so till then please subscribe to my channel thanks